Welcome to another DIY video. There is no need to call for professional because everything is DIYable. This time we are talking about how to fix the water leaking problem on the furnace when the heat is on. There are so many videos out there talking about water leaking, but many of them are related to air conditioning or it's because of the stupid drain is blocked. None of them solved my problem, so I decided to make a video to help others. Symptom is pretty simple, you see water leaking from the bottom of your furnace. I have the Scootment GKS9 high efficiency furnace. There are two screws for the top part and two screws for the bottom. For safety, you want to turn off the circuit breaker, you don't want to get electrocuted. For me, I have a dedicated transfer switch for my furnace. I can simply switch it off. Anyone who has experienced blackouts during the ice storm should have learned the lesson and seriously consider installing one. I have a video on my channel showing you how to install that. It's very easy. You don't need any electrician. For anyone who is interested in that project, I will post the link in the description. Don't be afraid. Let's open up the top part. Furnace is very friendly. It won't kill you unless you are stupid enough to do stupid things. As you can see here, there is water damage. The galvanized steel is totally rusted. You can tell water has been leaking for a while. Life is not perfect. We just have to deal with it and move on. Open up the bottom part and check for damage. Bottom part is okay. We will focus on the top. What you see here is the induced draft blower. It's not the main blower for your house. We will remove this very carefully. You may want to understand how it works because it helps you to troubleshoot in the future when there is no heat. The draft inducer motor starts before the burner ignites. The fan runs for 30 seconds to push any combustion gas out of the heat exchanger from the previous cycle. The common symptom is that if you hear some strange noise when your furnace starts, that means your inducer motor needs to be replaced. You want to replace it as soon as you hear that noise because there is a pressure switch if your inducer motor dies, it will lock out your furnace and there will be no heat. The draft inducer motor usually does not last very long. Average lifespan is less than 5 years. I got the professional HVAC guy to replace it for me in 2019. It was a mistake. Indeed, the water leaking problem was likely caused by that repair. I should have bought the part from eBay and replaced it by myself. If you are paranoid, buy the spare parts for the draft inducer motor as well as the pressure switch sounds like a good idea. The inducer motor is now removed. Let's take a look. The rust is concentrated on the left side. That means something is leaking from above. The plastic casing is part of the heat exchanger. Water get condensed during the heating cycle and there is a drain hose at the bottom left hand corner. Just for your knowledge, this drain hose goes outside and goes down to the drain on the floor. If you pay attention to your HVAC, you will notice that in summertime when AC is on, this bucket is completely dry. Now, continue to remove the plastic header. There are so many screws to remove. After you get rid of the last screw, what do you expect to see? Whoa, you will see this. What the heck is that? Well, that's part of the heat exchanger designed. The technical name for this is Twisted Tape Turbulator, GFGI if you're interested in it. Okay, see the rust down here. Above that, there is a water droplet. On top of that, there is a vertical cut on the rubber gasket. Seems like we found the issue. See the water stain? You can see it clearly water runs down from here. You can blame it on the poor quality manufacturing process because there is a hard plastic seam probably made in China, but I would just partially blame it on that. The other part of the problem is the HVAC professional guy who came to fix my furnace I told you earlier back in 2019, he did remove this for inspection. I saw him using a cordless drill to put the screws back on. He must have set the torque too high that caused this problem. It's very hard to find good professional contractors who cares about their customers and pay attention to little details like this, otherwise I would not even have started DIY in the first place. To solve this problem without spending any money on replacement parts, not even on the rubber gasket, I am using duct seal compound. For any serious DIY people, you should have this in your toolbox. 
This compound will not harden and is non-toxic and is non-corrosive, non-conductive, and it can block moisture. You may ask, is this similar to plumber's putty? Yes, indeed, you can use that instead. The next step is pretty much self-explanatory. I am running the duct seal compound on the lower portion of the plastic header. Push it down just like that and it should fix the problem. The compound is looking good. It's time to reinstall the plastic header back into the heat exchanger. Make sure you set your cordless drill to minimum torque. We will have to come back to tighten every single bolt one by one manually. This is the DIY quality I am talking about. Next, reattach the drain hose and secure it using the clamp. Put the draft inducer motor back to where it's supposed to be. Yep, tightening the screws by hand. The biggest difference between DIY versus professional is that DIY has unlimited time where professional is always in a rush because they need to go to the next job. Finally, reattach the pressure switch rubber hose to the draft inducer motor. Secure the adjustable clamps to make sure they are tight, otherwise you will have other problems. Most of the furnace has a safety switch on the bottom panel. You cannot start your furnace unless the switch is pressed down. Reinstall the bottom panel will switch it on automatically. You can leave the top open and watch the flame ignite. That sounds exciting, isn't it? Get the marshmallow ready! To see if there is any more water leaking, if it does not fix the problem, you are screwed. For me, it worked flawlessly. No more leaking. To fix the rusting problem, you need to put a coat of rust paint on top. Before doing that, make sure the galvanized steel is completely dry. Wait for a couple of days. Read the instructions on the can. Some paint may require primer. Oil-based paint may take up to 24 hours to dry. I would recommend to do this in summertime if you are not in a rush, because the film may be flammable depends on the brand. You don't want to burn your house down. I bet you any money, no HVAC repair guide in this world will go this far to put rust paint on your furnace. Only you as the homeowner will care about this. DIY is awesome, isn't it? Replace the filter every three months will keep your furnace in optimal performance conditions. But that's not what I want to share with you. What I want to tell you is, every single year during Black Friday, Home Depot Canada has filters on sale like crazy. You want to stock them up to like toilet paper. They don't run out of stock because most people only buy the filters when they need them. That was a very successful DIY project. Give this a thumbs up if you think this video has some good information. My goal is to inspire more people into DIY. I hope this helps. You may also want to check out other videos on my channel. I am pretty sure you will love them. Remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.